Okay, what we have here is the eSky Flight Simulator Controller. If you're an Australian customer, this one comes as Mode 1. So your throttle is over here on the right, and your ailerons are here, over here on the left. Now, if you're like me, you're a bit of a fan of Mode 2 rather than Mode 1. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to convert a Mode 1 eSky controller into Mode 2. Don't worry, it's pretty simple stuff. No soldering required, just a screwdriver and a pair of tweezers. Okay, so I've removed the controller from the container. Now, what we're going to do first is remove the back of this, but to make sure we don't damage the sticks in doing so, we're going to take this and place it face down in the other side of the box. That way we can now safely remove the screws from the back, here, 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 and here, without actually damaging the sticks. Alright, let's go ahead and do that now. Alright, I'm ready to remove the back of this thing. Bit of a jury rig set up here, it's not my camera, and I don't really have a tripod, so... It's sitting on two pieces of steel, and if everything goes wrong, it's going to crash to the floor. But here we go. We're going to start by removing this screw here. And this one. Now, they're not going to come out by themselves quite easily, but they will fall out if I turn it over. However, all we have to do is remove the back of the case, and then come with it. Okay. That should be everything we need to do. Here we go. Okay. That is the case off. I might just zoom in a little bit and see if we can uh, get a better look at that. Okay, so over here is the right-hand side. Now, this is currently where the throttle is set. Over here is the left, currently in mode 1, and this is not where the throttle is set, obviously. Now, what you'll notice about this is over here, we have a small metal piece, and this is what's actually making the throttle click as you move it up and down. On this side, the plastic clicker is there, and so is the mount for the metal piece. So what we're basically going to be doing is moving this from this side over to this side. As well as this, the side where the throttle is at the moment has no spring. So when you move the throttle up and down, the throttle stays where you leave it. It's not sprung, so it doesn't auto-return to the middle. We're also going to be moving the armature and spring from this side back over to this side so that when the throttle is on this side here, it clicks and does not return to the centre. And over here we have the spring back into the centre. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so the first step of our conversion is going to be to remove this metal clip. Pretty easy stuff. However, I need to get a smaller screwdriver than that. I'll be back. Okay, it's much less embarrassing when you have the right screwdriver. So we're going to remove this now. Pretty simple. Keep the screw with it, move it over there. Okay, now, what we need to do on this side is to remove this spring here and the armature underneath that spring and move it over to this side. Now the only way to do that is to unscrew these actual controller boxes, as I want to call them, but to do that we have to do that from the front. So I'm going to now turn it over and remove the screws. Now what you'll notice is there's actually what appears to be four screws, but the top one here is actually just plastic for looks, I guess. So all we need to do now is basically remove um, these three screws. Just making sure I'm doing the right one now. I've turned it over. Left has gone to right. So when we do this, you'll see that the stick will fall away from the front. And that's okay. No dramas. Okay, just make sure when we turn it over, we don't drop it so much that we break the wires. This is a very simple device. It's basically a very simple USB uh, chip under here, uh, joystick chip, um, connected to the four potentiometers. Very simple device. You can even wire uh, more wires up to this and get some buttons added to it if you want to. If you go into Windows, you'll notice that when you can calibrate the device, it has the four axes as well as another axis which is not used and three buttons provided by the chip which are also not used. So if you have the brains to do it, you could easily wire up your own switches to do things like throttle hold, for example, for 3D choppers if you wanted to. Anyway, now that we have this removed, we need to remove these two screws on the side of this box here to get the potentiometer to slide out. And they're quite tight, and you want to be fairly careful. You don't want to strip them, the heads of them. They are screwed into plastic, but they are a bit tight. Okay, now that we've done that, 
I'm also going to remove this screw here. Now what this screw does is basically hold the spring down. So we need to take this screw and the piece of plastic attached to it and move it over to this side. You'll see over here there is a space for that piece of plastic and that will be going in there as well. You have to change screwdrivers here. It's very small. Hopefully my hand's not getting in the way. I can't really see the camera that well. Let's have a look what we're doing. You guys can't see anything, of course. My hands are right in the way. Okay, that's good enough. Next thing I need now is a pair of tweezers to basically pull that spring off the armature, which we're going to do now. And there it goes. Okay, we can get it out, don't worry. Now, the tricky part now is to basically force the potentiometer away from the box, so, which basically means doing so without breaking anything, because it's a fairly tight fit, and we don't want to actually break the potentiometer in any way. Or, nor do we want to break the actual mechanisms. Alright, there we go, and there's the spring. And here, means if you can see that, you know, the armature. It's a bit hard to see in this light, but you should see it when the light catches it about right. That's it there. We're going to be moving that from this one across to this one. Okay, so let me just uh, stop this and get everything set up for the next shot. Okay, so the last thing I forgot to tell you to do was having undone this screw and removed the spring, we need to pull this piece of plastic out of there and keep that over the side here with the spring. Now that we've done this, we can return this potentiometer back into its slot over here. Give it a bit of a slight push to get in place. And we're pretty much done there. And we can now put these screws back in. So we're almost close to halfway finished here. I'll screw him in fairly gently until I get the other one in. You just sit there. If I was smart, I'd have power screwdrivers, but, you know, I'm not smart. Okay, that's screwed back in. Now, the only remaining thing to do with this potentiometer, sorry, with this control box, is to take our clicker armature and put it over on this side. So what I'm going to do before I do that is just grab a little bit of the grease that was on the other side and put that on the clicker here just to make sure we do what the manufacturer intended not a lot of grease unfortunately I use my fingers here I don't know what kind of grease it is you could probably resort to using petroleum jelly if you wanted by the look of it it kind of feels like it so now I'm going to put this on here I'll start by screwing it down first, and then I'll get organised. Okay. There we go. If you have a look now at the control box, we have a nice non-centering and uh, what feels like a clicky throttle. So let's just put that stick back in. We'll turn it back over now. Make sure it's centred. And we'll screw that stick back in. So I'll just use these screws. Hopefully I'm not getting out of out of shot. In fact I am just gonna zoom out now. 